a biblical perspective on life, culture and current events. This is 2020 on Vision. On Mondays, we like to check in with the Australian Christian Lobby and today, connecting with the new ACL State Director for South Australia, Ashlyn Weiss. Ashlyn, a special welcome along to 2020. Thank you. Very happy to be here, Neil. Ashlyn, first of all, um, for listeners who've not heard of you before, um, you know, this is an opportunity to be able to share a little bit of your background. I wonder if you can give us a, an inner nutshell Ashland Vice story, perhaps around your interest in faith and politics. Uh, what's the Ashland story? Sure. So I'll start with my Christian journey. Um, I'm very thankful to have grown up knowing about God And uh, my mum took us to church growing up, which is where I heard the gospel preached to me. Um, But during school, I went through some difficult times, especially difficult times with friends. I became quite the insomniac. And during that time, the Lord taught me to pray, which um, was really instrumental for me. I started reading the Bible. And the first book that I ever read was the book of Romans. And that really painted a clear picture to me of the condition of the human heart. I was convicted of my need to Christ, of for Christ, and I sort of shifted from having this general understanding of God existing to looking at Christ and the cross and saying, that is my Lord. Um, and from there, God, yeah, infused his love in my heart. I got out of school and I had a gap year and I started working for a senator. I worked for the federal parliament for four years in a bit of a research and admin position, which sparked my interest in politics. And I became really involved in the pro-life movement. I was also doing some Christian ministry with women exiting prostitution. So that issue was close to my heart. And around about that time, I also started studying law. So I began applying my legal knowledge that I was learning to making submissions to parliament on all of these issues that I cared about. In 2019, the South Australian parliament tried to decriminalise prostitution completely. And having had experience working with women in that industry, I wanted to be involved in advocating against it. And that sort of ended up um, snowballing into greater involvement with the ACL. And now here I am. And with a background and a story like that, uh, it won't be a surprise to any listener that you are now uh, the South Australian State Director for the Australian Christian Lobby because uh, that sort of preparation, in some sense, it means you've got a major uh, role to play in the way things will potentially transform into the future. Uh, so exciting things for you. And Ashlyn, thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, interesting, just before we move on, when we talk about the condition of the human heart, I know listeners will be able to hear you went through your own ups and downs there in your high school years and beyond. Uh, To understand that and the way that, you know, God and Scripture applies tremendous wisdom and life through Scripture, this is the sort of thing that I can hear just drives you. Any, Any just anything further to add there? Yeah, sure. Look, I went through a, a long time after reading the Book of Romans of just, um, you know, I think before I'd really read the Word, I'd had a very performance-driven faith. I wanted to please God, and I saw my performance as the basis for His love for me. And, you know, we really all have to have that time where we uh, see our heart for what it is. We see that we are sinful and that no matter how much we try, we will never be able to face a holy God without the cross. But that makes um, his grace and the cross all the more wonderful and beautiful because we see how much we need it. So, um, yeah, that's how how it played out for me. And it was a few years of really learning about God's love after that and, you know, continuing to seek that every day. Well, I think listeners will be able to hear in your story and in your heartbeat here that uh, you're not just commenting on a few headlines when we do some updates with you from South Australia. It's a life that's invested and even a calling from God to be invested where you are right now. Hey, let's start with what's been going on in South Australia because uh, there was a little bit of excitement. There was a motion for a gender inquiry in South Australia. People were excited by the fact that uh, at least a government was standing up and saying, let's get the truth on what's happening around uh, all sorts of issues around gender. But then 
it was defeated. Uh, you've been following that along mm-hmm. carefully. Uh, how are you seeing what's happened in South Australia as a result as a result of that? Yeah, there was some excitement, Neil. We were really hopeful that perhaps this inquiry would pass. And it is generally a convention that motions in the upper house for an inquiry will pass without too much controversy. But unfortunately, on this occasion, so it was due to go to a vote on the 6th of February. And unfortunately, the day before, our Premier, Peter Malinowskis, decided not to allow a conscience vote on the on the motion and the Labor Party took a position against it. Now, that's really rare for an inquiry of that nature, and it's very telling of, I think, the controversy controversy of um, how our department is approaching the issue of gender dysphoria. Uh, We have advocates on the other side telling us that if we investigate this issue fully, it may lead to... um, suicides from kids suffering gender dysphoria. Now, I think that's really, um, and it's it's not uh, founded and it's not true. We know that um, we need a full and proper investigation into how we are treating these kids. Current SA Health Guidelines posit gender uh, affirmation therapy as the favoured approach when it comes to people, no matter what their age is, there's no minimum age limit on them getting onto some of these puberty blockers and uh, not just puberty blockers, but then cross-sex hormones and treatment after that. And we've seen inquiries of this nature overseas lead to greater restrictions on this gender affirmation therapy approach. We know that in the United Kingdom, there was the famous cash review that led to the closure of the Tavistock Clinic. And that's really because, Neil, there's not much evidence supporting that fast-tracking kids onto puberty suppression medications and then cross-sex hormones is actually beneficial um, and we have on good basis to believe that it is more harmful than beneficial for any of these kids, especially at such a young age. Okay, interesting, isn't it? Uh, When we think of the effects of what happens when uh, gender dysphoria is encouraged, Um, that the word suicide comes into play here. And, uh, of course, the opponents of Christianity and having an influence here like to say that because Christians somehow set a standard for uh, how gender and sex look uh, with a biblical foundation, that somehow or other that's aggravating and causing people to suicide. But it, it appears to me that the opposite may be true, And uh, any thoughts from you here? Because, you know, just as a little wild outside thought here, this is the challenging thing when, in fact, lives are on the line if you don't get things right here. And, uh, of course, you've got those who are accusing the Christians one way, but Christians saying, wait a minute, those things may actually be because this dysphoria is allowed to be out of control. Any thoughts? That's absolutely right, Neil. And that mentality that uh, exposing or even exploring the issues on a more balanced basis would lead to something like suicides is uh, founded on minority stress theory. And that theory we see playing all throughout the research which supports uh, gender medical transition in kids. And the idea behind it is that all of the um, mental health struggles that these people unfortunately do experience can be put down to external factors like um, the stigma around this issue. And so if we can get rid of the stigma, then they'll be fine and everything will be normal. Uh, The problem with that is there isn't any evidence really that stigma is the cause of the struggles that they face. Um, We have, you know, and I think it doesn't take too much common sense to think about um, the kind of effect that suppressing the natural process of puberty might have on you cognitively, might have on you emotionally and hormonally. Uh, So that's why we need an inquiry to be able to talk about this evidence. And it really is coming out. It's also coming out in countries like Finland and Sweden, which have cracked down on on taking um, less of an affirmation approach in kids. And even the Netherlands, near which uh, pioneered what we call the Dutch protocol, which which is what this whole theory around uh, transitioning people from one gender to the other, where that came out of, even the Netherlands is now questioning this approach. 
So there was a motion for a gender inquiry and Premier Malinaskis did not allow a conscience vote for an inquiry like that to go ahead. Is it dead in the water? Is there no prospect that it might get up again? Is there another move for another motion? Any any uh, inside information from you whether that can happen? It's not entirely dead in the water, thankfully. Uh Although the Premier has his reservations towards a parliamentary inquiry, there's potential opportunity for another form of inquiry. I mentioned the cash review earlier. That was called an expert review. So in that format, it's a little bit further removed from the Parliament and may potentially receive support. So we're taking the momentum that is in place from this month Uh, to continue advocating for an inquiry. And we are hopeful. Um, It may be a bit of a fight from here, but uh, there is momentum on this issue. And not just Christians are talking to our parliament on these issues. Many, many parents are concerned about um, the rate of gender dysphoria in kids and the limited say that they can have on um, whether their kids can socially transition and then... um, get on to these gender transition um, medications. So we're hopeful. Hopeful. Uh, that's uh, one way of saying, yes, uh, there is possibility. And, uh, you know, for listeners who are concerned, it might even be a prayer point that something like that might bring some truth into the debate. Hey, let's go from South Australia to things happening nationally, Ashlyn. Uh, the Religious Discrimination Bill, uh, what's the latest that you can fill us in on here? The latest I can fill in is uh, our CEO, Michelle, did meet with our Attorney General, Mark Dreyfus, a couple of weeks ago. I'm not sure if an update's been provided to you on that already, but that was really good for Michelle to be able to sit down with him face-to-face and express our concerns. But we're yet to see any final report or exposure draft of this bill. We're expecting for this to come out in March, which is pretty soon. And that's about the same time that the Australian Law Reform Commission will release its final recommendations. Now, there is grave cause for concern, especially for Christian schools. The Australian Law Reform Commission, or ALRC, recently in January released its consultation paper recommending the removal of religious exemptions from the Sex Discrimination Act. Act. Um, And these exemptions essentially function to allow schools to preference Christians or people who align with their religious ethos in their hiring practices. Uh, So if the government leans towards the ALRC's recommendations, schools are, or Christian schools rather, are going to be in a really sticky situation. So that's the key issue that we're trying to advocate on to make sure that Christian schools and organisations can continue to function with integrity by being able to prefer uh, people who do align and live in accordance with their religious ethos in their hiring practices. And, you know, so important, this issue around Christian schools. Uh, There are those who are even making a prediction. This may be the end of Christian schooling as we know it if these sorts of uh, provisions in a uh, religious discrimination bill like this get up. Um, Any thoughts from you as to, you know, there's, I mean, you know, there's are you optimistic or is this something, are you pessimistic about what might happen out of this? Oh, look, I'm hardwired to be an optimist, but um, I think it, it, it is very concerning. And if if those exemptions are scrapped and nothing like a, a positive right, for example, for schools to continue doing what they're doing, if nothing like that is implemented in its place, it will be the end of Christian schooling as we know it. And look, this discussion has been going on since 2017 with the marriage plebiscite, the then Um, Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull commissioned the Ruddock Review into religious freedom and he said that one of his concerns was Christian schools on um, this issue. And you and I both know that uh, Christian schools are so important. And we also know from research that the reason why Aussie parents send their kids to Christian schools is because they want their children to be educated in a distinctly Christian environment. So there's a lot of reason to be concerned, but we just have to keep uh, praying. We have to keep advocating and we don't want to give up um, ever.
Times are changing. Let's keep with Christian schools, but zero in on New South Wales, because in New South Wales there's an e-petition that wants to take away public school parents uh, from their right to choose special religious education. Uh, What's the latest that's happening in New South Wales? Yeah, so you're right, Neil. There is an e-petition that wants to remove the right to special religious education, or SRE. Um, So currently in the New South Wales Education Act, there's a requirement for public schools to allocate time for SRE, which presents an opportunity for students to explore Christian foundations. Now, my understanding is those subjects are generally elective, um, but, you know, far more parents are concerned that public education is uh, increasingly moving away from Christian values and becoming a platform for um, more controversial ideologies. When Christian education or Christian teachings are removed from schools, it's often replaced with something else. But we really want to protect um, this special opportunity that New South Wales has to be able to continue uh, offering religious education. So we're campaigning on this issue. Uh, We want to make sure that kids are able to learn about our Christian history, about what religion is, what Christianity is. And undoubtedly it's not just uh, those in New South Wales who ought to be concerned there because uh, they'll be talking about this right around Australia. Uh, A quick update, uh, any thoughts here from you on uh, deductible gift recipient status for charities? This affects Christian schools, it can affect uh, churches no doubt. In fact it's got a very, very Mm -hmm. wide application. Any updates on DGR? Yeah, so as you might be aware, Neil, there has been a proposal to remove DGR status for uh, charities and organisations that exist for the advancement of religion uh, and the advancement of education. It also calls for the ending of basic religious charity status, which would essentially increase reporting requirements for almost one in five Australian charities, which is a huge red tape issue. And obviously um, the current funding arrangements are so important for these charities and these schools' viability. Non-government schools and religious charities are non-for-profit and without the DGR status, they will be struggling. So um, the final report on this inquiry is due on May 11th. So we want to advocate and I guess make known to our MPs that this that the advancement of religion and advancement of education need to be protected in our country. Okay, one more quick one. Um, We can't get away from the fact that uh, we're about to move into a whole lot of different elections. Uh, Tasmania's got a state election that's coming up. Uh, There's a special focus from the Australian Christian Lobby. Where are you going to be focusing your resources on letting Tasmanians know what to look for as they cast their votes? We're going to be focusing on parental rights. This election is in 26 days on the 23rd of March. And the reason we're focusing on parental rights is because we've seen various proposals where parental rights will be jeopardised in Tasmania. The classic example of that is the conversion therapy bans um, where parents will have, if passed, parents will have little say Um, over children's decisions to undergo gender transition. So we want to campaign on this issue. In fact, the conversion law currently being proposed in Tasmania is certainly not as bad as the law uh, in Victoria, and that was really out of response of of a huge backlash from the original Tasmania's uh, Law Reform Commission's proposal for conversion legislation that was quite extreme. Nonetheless, we see it as really important to just Um, inform voters on where candidates stand on the issue of parental rights. Um, So we've got a website up at the moment, tasvotes.org.au, where people can have a look and see where the candidates sit on this and a number of other issues so that they can make an informed vote. Well, what a great update for things that are happening, not only in your home state of South Australia, but things going on nationally and in New South Wales and uh, with the Tasmanian election looming. Uh, Wonderful insights today and uh, great update. Thank you so much, Ashlyn Weiss. Ashlyn is ACL State Director for South Australia. 
uh, two websites there to mention, the acl.org.au website. No doubt there's a link on there too to the one that she mentions uh, around the Tasmanian state election, tasvotes.org.au. So acl.org.au and tasvotes.org.au. You'll be able to keep abreast of information as things are happening and developing because these are major issues that we're talking about that change the very fabric of our culture. Uh, So it's worth monitoring and taking action wherever you can. Ashlyn, thanks so much for sharing your thoughts and your heart with us today on 2020. Thanks very much, Neil. Thanks for having me. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.